Welcome to Nuclear Security Matters. My name is Nicholas Roth. I'm here with Matthew Bunn, who's a professor of practice at the Kennedy School of Government. For more than two decades, the, the Russia and the United States have been cooperating on nuclear security through the Non-Luger Cooperative Threat Reduction Initiative. Last year, that program ended. Was it successful? Well, I wouldn't exactly say that it ended. It was replaced with a new agreement under uh, what's called the Multilateral Nuclear Energy Program for Russia, or MNEPR. Um, the new agreement is more limited in some respects. On the other, and in particular, it leaves out the Russian Ministry of Defense entirely, but it does provide legal cover for some things that never had legal cover before. For example, uh, working together on reactor conversion and on consolidating nuclear material to fewer locations. In the big picture, if you look at where nuclear security was in Russia right after the collapse of the Soviet Union, say in the mid-1990s, and you look at it today, it's really like night and day. Um, it was really a somewhat disastrous situation in the 1990s. The Soviet Union had had a reasonable security system, but it was based on a world that no longer existed. It was based on a closed society with closed borders, pampered, well cared for nuclear workers who got the best of everything Soviet society had to offer and everybody closely watched by the KGB. And basically all of that had gone away. There were people who um, weren't getting paid for six months at a time. There were literally guards in some cases leaving their posts to forage in the forest for food. Um, there were alarm systems that were shutting down because the facility hadn't paid its electricity bill. There were gaping holes in fences and so on. All of that is fixed up now. So now it would take a somewhat sophisticated conspiracy to steal nuclear material in Russia. Unfortunately, there are sophisticated insider conspiracies in Russia. And so there are still weaknesses that these more sophisticated uh, theft attempts might be able to exploit. So there's, there's still work to be done. Uh, it's also uh, an important question whether all of this equipment and so on that's been installed will be sustained. Um, so far, Russia is not putting in the money that's required to sustain the, the somewhat expensive equipment that's put in, put in place. A lot of this equipment only really has a lifespan of 10 years or so, so you have to be on a constant cycle of renewal. Um, and so far, what we're seeing in many cases is as the U.S. funding phases down, and the agreement was that the Russian fa funding would phase up, the Russian funding isn't phasing up, and the whole program is just phasing down. Um, so we need to figure out a way uh, to avoid that happening. And I ask that question because most of the world's focus right now is on Ukraine and what's happening between Russia and the United States. And with the vast majority of nuclear material in Russia and the United States, what do you think the implications are of the current situation on, on this follow-on cooperation uh, between the United States and Russia? Well, it's obviously a very difficult and challenging situation. Whenever uh, relations between the United States and Russia are as, as poor and as full of conflict as they are now, it makes it more difficult to cooperate even where we do have interests in common. But this is an area where we do have really fundamental interests in common. If you look back to 2008, when there was the war between Georgia and Russia, um, you find that the United States and Russia continued to cooperate on nuclear security right through that. And in fact, it was the, the sort of final sprint to get the nuclear security initiative that President Putin and President Bush had launched at Bratislava in 2005 completed. They had set an end of 2008 deadline. And so there was a lot of work that was ongoing even as the bullets were flying uh, in Georgia. So it, I remain hopeful that the cooler heads will see in both Moscow and Washington that there remain mutual interests in working together, not only on nuclear security in Russia, but on sharing the experience that Russia and the United States have uh, and helping other countries with nuclear security as well. And you listed some areas where you think potentially that the U.S. and Russia could cooperate. Um, are there other specific areas that you think um, could, be, uh, could be pursued in the future between the two countries in, in terms of nuclear security? Oh, I think there's a huge uh, field for uh, productive cooperation. Uh, the first and perhaps most important um, 
what we have seen so far in the real documented cases of nuclear theft, it's mostly by insiders. Insiders is the big problem, and insiders, especially where you're processing material in bulk so that it's possible for someone to just squirrel a little bit away without anybody noticing. So we need to work together to figure out what are the most effective and most cost-effective ways to deal with the insider threat. Uh, portal monitors that would detect anybody carrying anything out and making sure there isn't any way to get stuff out that bypasses the portal monitor out through a window or a back door or something like that. Detailed accounting systems that would be good enough to notice if material were removed and even if it were in little bits over a long period of time and good enough to know roughly when that happened and who had access and where uh, in the process uh, it happened. That's actually a fairly challenging thing to do when you're handling tons of nuclear material. So there's a lot of work to do together there. There's a, potentially a lot of work together uh, to lay out the best practices and to share the best practices and to help other countries improve their security. I would like to see a really partnership-based approach, more equals than U.S. assistance to Russia, which I think is no longer really politically sustainable either in Washington or in Moscow. But, you know, things like the incident at Y-12 in 2012, where an 82-year-old nun uh, made it through multiple layers of fencing right up to the building where thousands of bombs worth of highly enriched uranium were stored, make it clear that we have issues on security culture in the United States. There are some areas where we may be able to learn from the Russians, uh, and there are areas where they may be able to learn from us, and there are areas where neither of us have a good idea, and it would be good to share experiences uh, to work together. I think another area actually is joint research and development on new technologies, new procedures uh, for nuclear security to get the job done more effectively, cheaper. You know, we have the largest establishments in the world of nuclear technology experts. We ought to be working together to make sure this technology is managed safely and securely. For the past four years, the world has been engaged in an effort to secure vulnerable nuclear material. You had talked about some progress in Russia. Where else has there been significant progress? There's been progress all over the world, really. If you look, for example, at uh, non-nuclear weapon states and you look at the places where there's enough really high-quality, highly enriched uranium for the simplest terrorist nuclear bomb, what's called a gun-type bomb, there's only a few of those places, and every single one of those places that existed at the beginning of the four-year effort, either all the nuclear material has been removed or there have been substantial security upgrades for that material. So that's really substantial progress. You also look at the nuclear weapon states under the no Nuclear Nonproliferation Treaty. All five of them have instituted some important new improvements in their nuclear security or their nuclear accounting uh, or their nuclear control measures uh, over the past uh, four years. Uh, there's been some progress in Pakistan as well, um, which is outside the Nuclear Nonproliferation Treaty, although you still have a fundamental problem in Pakistan because you have this intersection of the world's fastest growing nuclear weapons program with some of the world's most intense concentration of really high capability terrorists. Terrorists capable, for example, a couple of years ago of attacking Pakistani military headquarters head on. Um, so uh, Pakistan remains a, a dangerous situation that I worry about because of this combination of uh, fast growing nuclear weapons program and high terrorist capability. I still worry about Russia. They have the world's largest stocks of nuclear weapons and materials in the world's largest number of places. They have dangerous insider corruption still uh, and greatly improved nuclear security, but still some areas where work needs to be done. And I worry about the remaining ones of these highly enriched uranium-fueled research reactors. Many of them are civilian. Many of them are on university campuses, often with pretty minimal security measures. We need to be We've made enormous progress on getting rid of those, but there's still a long way to go. 
One key metric that is really quite amazing is that there are now 27 countries that have eliminated all of the material on their soil that you could use to make a nuclear bomb. And 12 of those happened during the four-year effort. So 12 countries, all the material gone, nothing there for terrorists to steal anymore. Those are, in a very real sense, bombs that will never go off. Finally, strengthening nuclear security requires both political will and uh, providing the correct resources for accomplishing the task. Do you think um, the countries that are leading the effort are providing the right resources and the needed resources uh, to complete it? Well, I think the Obama administration deserves a lot of credit for um, leading this nuclear security summit process, which I do think has really transformed the debate about nuclear security around the world. There's many more agencies and many more countries that are focused on nuclear security and getting something done about nuclear security and making improvements than was ever uh, true before. And in the early years of the Obama administration, they did put some substantial additional resources in, in terms of funding for programs to secure nuclear material, to remove nuclear material from vulnerable locations, and so on. But uh, for the last several years, year after year, they have been cutting the budgets uh, for these programs and moving the deadlines for when they wanted to get some of these things done out. I mean, last year we got to the point where they had cut the budget for radiological security, for beefing up security for the kinds of radiological sources that could be used in a dirty bomb so much that the goal for when they wanted to finish with the, the things they thought were relatively urgent to do was 2044. You know, well, either it's worth spending U.S. taxpayers' money on, and it's because it's a real threat, in which case it ought to be dealt with before 2044, or it's not worth spending U.S. taxpayers' money on. I mean, things that, you know, are not enough of a threat that we can just leave them be until 2044 are probably not worth a lot of the taxpayers' money. Um, unfortunately, in the fiscal year 2015 budget that's just coming out, uh, what we see is further cuts. And the administration is trying to say, well, uh, you know, we finished a lot of the work that was in the four-year effort. That's true in part, but it's also true that these are cuts also from what they were projecting last year. And things haven't gotten any cheaper than they were last year. So the programs are really having to live with less money than they had been planning on, and that's going to slow us down. So I think that's something I would like to see Congress take action to reverse, as they have sometimes in the past. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you.